Hello, this is Dr. K. In this video, we're going to go over some basics of Android development. I'm going to draw from a number of good sources, including Headfirst Android Development, Android Programming, a Big Nerd Ranch Guide, and the Android Developer website. We'll start with some basic information about Android development from the first chapter of Headfirst Android Development. The Android platform, like most operating systems, has a layered architecture. The Linux kernel is at the core of the system. Then come low-level libraries and the Android runtime. Then comes the application framework, which are APIs that you can use to build your Android application. Then come the applications themselves, which is what the user interacts with when they use the device. Let's look at these layers in a little more detail. The top layer is where Android applications are. Not only the ones that come with the device, but also the ones you can develop with Android Studio. The applications sit on top of the application framework. The application framework contains Java libraries that your application directly depends on to work. This is true even if the code you write does not directly import these libraries. For example, every Android application has at least one activity, so you need an activity manager to manage it. Every Android application has view elements, and so on. The libraries underneath the application framework are fast C and C++ libraries that work closely with the core operating system. Typically, application developers do not access these libraries directly, but some libraries in the application framework will depend on these libraries. And the application runtime contains the virtual machine that runs your application. Before Android 5, the Dalvik virtual machine ran your Android program. The Android runtime has an improved performance over the Dalvik VM. The Android runtime also contains the core Java libraries needed to run your application. In other words, it contains the libraries that are typically included with Java. In contrast, the application framework contains Java libraries that are specific to Android applications. At the heart of the Android platform is a Linux kernel. It contains device drivers and handles traditional operating system tasks like memory management and task management. Now that we've seen the architecture of the Android platform, let's look at what is involved in Android development. First, Android development uses a mix of both Java and XML files. So you should be comfortable with both of these languages before starting Android development. In Android development, everything centers around the screen. The screen has a particular layout, and the screen also contains view elements like text areas and buttons. The layout essentially dictates how those view elements will fit together. You have to write Java code to tell your app how to behave when the user inputs something. An activity object is probably the most important object you will use in Android programming. An activity object defines a single screen in an application. It not only specifies the layout that should be used for that screen, but it also tells the application how to respond to the user. An Android application often uses extra resources like sounds and images, and these are referenced in your Android application code using XML files. Let's look at how a simple Android application starts up. First, the device launches your application and your initial activity object is created. The object is an instance of a Java activity class that you created in your application. Remember that an activity is associated with a screen. 
For that reason, the activity object must specify how things are laid out on the screen. So it calls a layout resource. Recall that resources are referenced using XML files. So the layout resource is an XML file. Finally, the activity tells Android to display the layout. Once the screen has been displayed, the user can interact with the device. For example, there may be a button for the user to press. Pressing that button creates an event, which is handled by the activity object. That does not mean the code that runs as a result is all in the activity object. It just means that the activity controls what code is called on a given event. Typically, a user event will cause some data in the application to be updated, and therefore the screen will have to be updated as well. Once the screen is updated, the user can see the result.